Recorded by M. L. Cohen, Cleveland, Ohio, January 17, 2007. The Sayings of Confucius from the Harvard Classics. Edited by Charles W. Eliot. Book 11. The Master said, Those who led the way in courtesy and music are deemed rude, and elegant the later school of courtesy and music. My want is to follow the leaders. The master said, None of the men who were with me in Chen or Tsai come any more to my door. Of noble life were Yen Yuan, Min Si Chun, Zhan Po Nu, and Qi Gong. Sao Wu and Sao Kung were the talkers. Statesmen John Yu and Chu Lu. Su Yu and Su Sa were men of culture. The master said, I get no help from Hugh. No word, I say, but delights him. The master said, How good a son was Min Chen! In all that parents and brethren said of him, no hole was picked. Nan Zheng would thrice repeat, the scepter white. Confucius gave him his niece to wife. Chi Kang asked which of the disciples loved learning. Confucius answered, Yen Hu loved learning. By ill luck, his life was cut short. Now there is no one. When Yen Yuan died, Yen Lu asked for the master's chariot to furnish an outer coffin. The master said, Whether gifted or not, each one speaks of his son. When Li died, he had an inner but not an outer coffin. I would not walk on foot to furnish an outer coffin. Following in the wake of the ministry, it would ill become me to walk on foot. When Yi Yan died, the master cried, Woe is me, I am undone of heaven, I am undone of heaven. When Yan Yuan died, the master gave way to grief. Those with him said, Sir, ye are giving way. The master said, Am I giving way? If for this man I did not give way to grief, for whom should I give way? When Yi Yan died, the disciples wished to bury him in state. The master said, This must not be. The disciples buried him in state. The master said, Hui treated me as a father. I have failed to treat him as a son. No, not I. It was your doing, my boys. Chi Lu asked, What is due to the ghosts of the dead? The master said, We fail in our duty to the living. Can we do our duty to the dead? He ventured to ask about death. We know not life, said the master. How can we know about death? Seeing the disciple Min standing at his side and winning strength, Su Lu with warlike front, John Yu and Si Kung Fresh and Yank, the master's heart was glad. A man like you, he says, dies before his day. The men of Lu were building the long treasury. Min Su Shen said, Would not the old one do? Why must a new one be built? The master said, That man does not talk. When he speaks, he hits the mark. The master said, What has the loot of you to do twanging at my door? But when the disciples began to look down on Su Lu, the master said, Yu has climbed to the hall, though he has not passed the closet door. Su Kong asked whether Shi or Shang were the better man. The master said, Shi goes too far, Shang goes not far enough. Then Shi is the better man, said Su Kong. Too far, replied the master, is no better than not far enough. The Qi was richer than the Duke of Chao. Chu added to his wealth by becoming his tax-gatherer. The master said, He is no disciple of mine. Sound your drums to the attack, my boys. To I is simple, Shen is dull, she is smooth, you is coarse. The master said, Who is well-nigh faultless, and oftentimes empty? Su will not bow to fate, and hoards up substance, but his views are often sound. Su Chang asked, what is the way of a good man? 
the master said. He does not tread in footprints, neither can he gain the closet. The master said, Commend a man for plain speaking. He may prove a gentleman, or else but seeming honest. Sulu asked, Shall I do all I am taught? The master said, Whilst thy father and elder brothers live, how canst thou do all thou art taught? Jan Yu asked, Shall I do all I am taught? The master said, Do all thou art taught. King Si Hua said, You asked, Shall I do all I am taught? And ye spake, sir, of father and elder brothers. Chiu said, Shall I do all I am taught? And he answered, Do all thou art taught. I am puzzled, and make bold to ask you, sir. The master said, Chu is bashful, so I egged him on. Yu has the pluck of two, so I held him back. When fear beset the master in Kuang, Yen Yan fell behind. The master said, I held thee as dead. He answered, While my master lives, durst I brave death? Chi Xuan Zhan asked whether Shi Yu or Zhan Chu could be called statesmen. The master said, I thought you would ask me some riddle, sir, and your text is you and you. A minister who does his duty to the king, and withdraws rather than do wrong, is called a statesman. As for you and Chu, I should call them tools. Who would do one's bidding, then? Neither would they do your bidding, said the master. If bidding slay king or father. Su Lu had Su Ka made governor of Pai. The master said, Thou art undoing a man's son. Su Lu said, What, with the people and the guardian spirits, must a man read books to come by knowledge? The master said, This is why I hate a glib tongue. The master said to Su Lu, Tseng Hai, Zhan Yu, and King Si Hua, as they sat beside him, I may be a day older than you, but forget that. You are wont to say, I am unknown. Well, had ye a name, what would ye do? Su Lu answered lightly, Give me charge of a land of a thousand chariots, crushed between great neighbors, overrun by soldiery and searched by famine, in three years' time I could put courage into the people and high purpose. The master smiled. What wouldst thou do to you, he said. He answered, Had I charge of sixty or seventy square miles, or from fifty to sixty square miles, in three years' time I would give the people plenty. As for courtesy, music, and the like, they would wait the rise of a gentleman. And what's what thou do, Chi? He answered, I speak of the things I fain would learn, not of what I can do. At service in the ancestral temple, or at the grand audience, clad in black robe and cap, I fain would fill a small part. And what's what thou do, Chen? Chen ceased to play, pushed his still sounding lute aside, rose and answered. My choice would be unlike those of the other three. What harm in that, said the master. Each but spake his mind. In the last days of spring, all clad for the season, with five or six grown men and six or seven lads, I would bathe in the yi, be fanned by the breeze in the rain god's glade, and wander home with song. The master sighed and said, I hold with Tien. Chen Si stayed after the other three had left and said, What did ye think of what the others said, sir? Each but spake his mind, said the master. Why did ye smile at you, sir? Lands are swayed by courtesy, but what he said was not modest. That was why I smiled. But did not ye you too speak of a state? Where could sixty or seventy square miles be found, or from fifty to sixty, that are not a state. And did not Chi Yi, too, speak of a state? Who but great vassals would there be in the ancestral temple, or at the grand audience? But if Chi Yi were to play a small part, who could fill a big one? End of Book 11 
Recorded by M. L. Cohen, Cleveland, Ohio, January 17, 2007.